And I understand that you are being concerned because, well, that's what usually you get after their visits to <coughs> the orthopedic surgeons, right? And when they start giving you this hard time and really just uh, shifting your focus not in a very helpful way. So let's kind of look at the x-rays first and then discuss further. Okay, so here we are. This is the 2019. So you see 2019, 2020. So of course the thing that you are being told, right, so you see the one that is being made into the focus of the entire presentation is this description of the angles and calculations of distances and so on. But in fact that's of course a very narrow and um, frankly misleading way of looking at things because well we have to remember uh, several key points right so you see that this part is the most dynamic portion of the pelvis so what we really want to see here and what do we want to focus on is first we're going to start with the actual part of the pelvis itself right so you see we want to start with the pelvis itself and then we will move to the actual legs right and only then we are going to move towards the hip itself so let's look at that and we are going to see a very different picture so this is 2019 what you're seeing here you know just look at the pelvis so this is the right side this is the left side what do you see you know like if you make this very simple line right you're going to observe that this portion, the right portion, right, if we drive it from here to here, is very, very different, right? You can see that the total thing on the right side is very different from the left. So you can see that that is the result of the big asymmetry. You can see this big asymmetry everywhere. You can see it at this point, you can see it at this point, you can see it at the top, you can see it at the relationships. See, because that's this angle, and here is another angle. So that's really a very big difference within the pelvis itself. And then, of course, if you look at the bottom here, what you're going to see, you're going to see the kind of opposite picture. So here, the, left, the right side is sort of looking more narrow and the left side is more flat and if you look further at the shape of the bone you're going to see there's the opposite look at this portion it's small and this portion is big right so what does it mean that's the twist of the entire bone and that's really a very very big thing you know and also you can see here the bone is very much like lumped and folded on itself and this is the way you can see that's a that's a distance so like it's a gap now it's important to realize right that this is that this is a continuous bone so that's where those bones are it's not just a joint it's really the bone which is being in the process of formation so that's really the biggest thing so here you can see this very well, right? So that's the actual bone, right? So you see which looks, uh, well, that's, that's how it looks when it's all together. So that's what you see as the total pelvis. But if you look at it in uh, the process of formation, that's what happens. So you see this bone, you know, the total iliac bone consists of three bones. And these red dots, one two three so they tell you what these are primary ossification centers so that's where they're getting uh sort of ossification means that that's where it get densified right so you see that's how the bone is being formed from softer cartilage into more dense bone and here these points these are the secondary ossification parts so effectively what's happening this portion that you're looking at which we are associating with the 
acetabulum is being kind of formed and shaped al uh, along the process as uh, the total bone is connecting so it's it's an active acidification process which is going here so in fact the most important thing right is to get this big bone right because that's if you don't get this bone right everything else is going to be wrong so you have to prioritize things so that's why all these three parts that we just looked at right the top the width and then all this internal connections that's really the huge huge thing so if you look from here you can really now once you know what to look at you understand that anus pelvis if anything is a lot more symmetrical and balanced than it was last year look at this so now if you look at this portion of course it's a bit different you know you don't see it so well but uh, you can see you know because like you've got more of the leg length or the bone length in this new picture but here what you can see again you can see the big difference between the right and the left side see here you've got more of an angle right and this is more steep and obviously this is wider this is narrow and so on so in that sense that's not a good position of the leg that's a reflection of the fact that she was twisted all the way from the top and that's the fusion that i explained before this fusion of the iliosaurus muscle and so on so this triangle which has been just you know held on and then showing the twist so that's what we've seen and that twist was really a complex twist combining the kind of counter twist from the top and the twist from the bottom and the depression so all sorts of troubled uh, troubled elements because okay, if you can see this is that triangle right so you see that's a triangle which causes the this bypass on the pelvis and of course it's very hard to balance it so eventually becomes a twist so we look at the upper part you know connection of the pelvis to the lumbar she is better and also here you can see that she's clearly straighter while this line is showing you a lot more of the c shape so in fact we see the spine is better connection between the iliac and the spine is better the iliacs are much more symmetrical the changing position the changing shape of the total pelvic bone is radically improving you know the whole balance is showing at all the three parts so the ilium the ischium and the pubic so all the three parts are changing this midsection is changing the opening is changing so you know then you can see the big change in the shape of the leg so she's starting to show much better balance and starting to show at least something moving in the direction of the track hunters. so that's a great change so and in that respect that's just right from the start showing that the things have really changed very very well and in that respect that's already showing you the big progress now the second consideration that i want to make is that the pelvic evolution is the key but this is where you want to continue to build this total part right so it's a total part total connection that you need to build it's not the orientation it's the connection that you need to build here so it has to you know emerge and build all these necessary links in this area and that's what we always show this picture that is explaining you the nature of the hip so you see the nature of the hip is to form the activity of all these tendons 
and you can see here right so you see how important it is to have this you know this mid portion this the eyes of the pelvis to be so well balanced so this is what Anna needs she needs to build this underlying connections N and that's important to understand that these connections they make like I know 90 percent of the stability and then the vertical positioning standing frame and so on it's like 10 percent on top of it so that's why it only works for very mild children who have already 80 90 percent but Anna doesn't have this so for her the standing frame is a bad idea because you know she can't use it properly so she would use this triangle and as you can see here with this triangle if we zoom in you know we understand that here you know that's a direct connection that goes to the spine and then there is no development of the hip so that's the part that she needs to develop so it's that simple so in fact that's the second portion right so first to understand that the pelvis is you know that spine pelvis connections with the spine the sacrum you know three parts of the pelvic bones and so on that everything changed really well <laughs> that's a very obvious thing second thing is to understand that the legs are actually changing in rotations third thing is to understand that you want to have the evolution of the entire pelvis and if you look well i mean didn't mention this but if you look here look how strangely is the acetabulum position so it cannot even work as a roof you know let's if you look at these levels and now the acetabulum itself is looking much better so the roof is developing but it's not developing by pressure into it it's developing by the change of the tension and the orientation of the entire pelvic bone so and that was number three number four you know until the age of whatever you know like for the next 10 years you know whatever happens you don't even think you don't even remotely listen to whoever tell you anything about the surgery right so you see i mean of course we are working in that respect that you would be able to you know make the maximum to get the right stability and anything else but just the question is that you should my what i'm trying to say is that any even like plus minus balance and so on considerations of the surgery they could only happen when the child is already hitting the growth spurt when the child already has pains potentially then there was the only sort of situation when you can consider the surgery in all other situations especially at the age of three five seven and whatever you know any conversation about the surgery is just a complete you know not just a waste of time it's just waste of your energy and complete confusion because surgeries are unpredictable surgeries go wrong you know like immediately surgeries go wrong after half a year after a year and so on and you know like trying to block the thing because when they fuse the hip there so what they do they actually block the development of the pelvis itself and they cause the additional damage to the spine so that's the very simple thing now your question was about what can we do well the first thing is that keep doing what you've been doing of course there is the point which we discussed before doing the machine applications that's an obvious thing and uh, i understand that it might be difficult and so on but you know whatever you've managed to do and all your abr work there so like we've done some great stuff for the pelvis so that's a very simple logic you know like if you can get the pelvis or if you can get the leg or if you can get another leg get the stimulus of the machine so that that's where 
you know, we can see great progress, we can see the great transformations of the palace, but there is way more to build, right? So I always keep saying the same, reminding, not saying, reminding this thing, between the age of one and the age of 10 years old, 10 years old, the pelvis has to increase by 500%, right? So it means that it has to be five times greater, five times larger in volume in proportion to the rest of the body. So that means that in absolute volume, it's like 10, 15 times that the pelvis has to increase. So that's compared to where it was. So that's really the, the key thing. That's what we, you want to keep in mind, this, this understanding. So that's why even if you can do one hour of the machine a day, that's already great because that's giving you all this additional stimulus so and something that you can do without working manually. So the best way that you can help, wrap around, wrap around, wrap around and make the machine work.